Hi guys, let's learn VLSM in 4 minutes only. Please subscribe to my YouTube channels for M tips if you love this video. Last week, I already explained about the subnetting. So if you know about the subnetting, we were going to pick up a largest host to form our subnettings and we were going to have an equally divided each of the group with the same number of the host. Now in these examples here, we have 30 hosts for each group, 30 hosts for each group. But however, in some of the companies, they might have to use a smaller subnet, which means maybe one subnet, but inside there, they will have only four hosts. So it will waste a lot of IP addresses if we just base on the subnettings to pick up the 30 hosts. So that's why we introduce a variable LAN subnet mask, which is called VLSM. What is VLSM? So VLSM allows you to have much tighter control over your addressing scheme, adjust the number of subnets and number host addresses based on the specific needs of your network, supported by protocols such as RIP version 2, OSPF, EIGRP, dual ISIS, and BGP protocols. What is the benefits of VLSM? Why do we learn the VLSM? why we need to know how to count the VLSM. So these are all the benefits. The first is allows the efficient use of address space. The second allows the use of multiple subnet mask lens. So if you are aware that last week, when we learned about the subnetting, we are restricted to slash eight, slash 16, slash 24, if we base on the class full address. But when we do the VLSM, we were based on the customer requirements, okay, to allow us to have a multiple subnets besides slash 8, slash 16, and slash 24, we can have a different subnet mask, okay, such as slash 9, slash 10, slash 25, slash 27, and so on. And the third advantage is it will break up an address block into a smaller custom blocks. And the fourth advantage will be allows for route summarizations and provides more flexibility in the network design. And the last one is supports hierarchical enterprise networks. So these are all the benefits of VLSM. Okay, now how to count the VLSM? So arrange the largest host to the smallest host. Yes, that's the tips. We have to arrange the largest host to the smallest host based on the company requirement. So assuming that I'm giving you a class A range. So class A addressing guide, um, later when you do the exercises, you can always refer to this class A guide if you have the maximum number of the host is 16,777,214. So you can use a class A. So according to this table, if you are using the 16,777,214, you can use the CIDR, which is slash 8. And the minimum numbers that is used will be 2, which is slash 30. So you can base on this uh, table to do your VLSM. This is the class B VLSM, which is slash 16, with the maximum host of 65,534. Now, this 65,534 is a usable host. Okay, we call it the usable host. And the CIDR suggested will be slash 16. Now, CIDR and the prefix is actually referring to the same terms. Okay, then the last one will be the class C, which is with the usable number of hosts is 254. And the suggested CIDR will be slash 24. Of course, you can use the calculator to count, but this will be the largest host. Uh, there, there will be a, a very good guideline if you have the host, usable host, which is more than 1 million. Okay, so you can always refer back to this diagram to do your VLSM. Okay, let's move on to our first practice. 110, it will be under the class A. So class A, you will have the default eight ones. And then you have uh, at zeros, at zeros, at zeros. Okay, so the first byte will be a network portions. Second byte will be a host portion. 
third byte will be the host portion, and the last one will be the host portion. All right, then in order to cater our first requirement, we have 3 million 50 thousands of the host that is required. So how are you going to do your subnet address? So our subnet address, the first thing you need to do is you copy down the questions 110.0.0.0. Okay, it will be put into your first row. Okay, so after that, 3 million something, you refer back to your addressing table. Okay, the one that I give you just now. If you forgot already, you can you can refer back to my previous slides. All right. And according to the suggestion, in order to cater 3,050,000, you have to use slash 10 for your CIDR or prefix. So 10, all right. So we have from the diagram here, we have eight bits already. So we adjusted, we borrow one, two, two more bits here so that it will be equivalent to 10 slash 10. That means it's 10 ones, okay? Now, from here, you will know that the changes will be on the second byte because you will have the numbers of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 bits remaining for your host bytes, okay, uh, for the second bytes. So 2 to the power of 6, you will get 64. That means your second byte here, second byte, you plus 64, you will get the next subnets to cater 3,050,000 hosts. Okay, so the next number will be 110.64.0.0. Okay, now we have done this. Now let's move on to the second uh, requirement. The second requirement is 1,540,000. If you base on the addressing table given, the requirement will be slash 11. Okay, so slash 11 to cater 1,540,000. So how are you going to do that? You increase one more bit have your left bit okay if you understand from my previous lesson once is referring to your sunnet bits zero is referring to your host bits okay so now we have a slash 11 that means we have the 11 ones okay so when you have 11 ones your remaining uh, host bits will be one two three four five five bits left so two to the power of five you will get 32 that means your second one here 64 plus 32, you will get 96. So the rest of it for your third byte is zero. The last byte will be zero. But for your first byte, you just copy down your questions. So that's why the next number you will get is 110.96.0.0. Okay. So in order to cater 1,075,000, okay, one, sorry, 1,075,000, we have to use the slash 11. So if slash 11 is still the same, we are using the 2 to the power of 5. Okay, so 2 to the power of 5, you will get 32. 96 plus 32, you will get the next number, which is 128. 110.128.0.0. Okay, so I have done. And we move on to 975,000. So for 975,000, I will do the base on my addressing. I will use the slash 12. Okay, slash 12. So in this case, I will be adjusted 12 bits for my 12 ones, okay, for my for my subnet bits. And the remaining bits for my host bits will have 4. So now 2 to the power of 4 will be 16. So 1 to 8 plus 16, you will get 144. Okay, in order to cater 700, 975 thousands. Okay, next, we move on to 525,000. 525,000. What is a prefix or CIDR? You will always refer back to the table given, yeah? Okay, so according to the suggestion, will be slash 12. All right, so you have the slash 12. And the numbers is still the same, which is the tutorial power of 4 will be 16. So 144 plus 16, you will get the next subnet, which is 160. Okay, then you do again for 450,000. So 450,000 according to the suggested answer will be slash 13. So slash 13, that means you adjusted here to 13 ones. So your left, uh, the remaining bits left will be three host bits. Okay, so two to the power of three will be eight. One six eight plus eight, sorry, one six oh plus eight, you will get one six eight. 
So that will cater the 450,000 hosts. Okay, then we do the last one. In order to cater 150,000 hosts, based on the suggest suggested answer, you will have to use the slash 14. So you adjusted here to 14. Okay, you left two more bits. That's all. All right, so 2 to the power of 2 will get 4. Okay, so 168 plus 4, you will get the next number will be 172. Okay, so we have done. Now, let's look at the first usable. Now, according to the theory, the first usable must be start from the standard address plus 1. So your standard address plus 1, 110.0.0.0 plus 1, you will get 110.0.0.1. And the rest of it, you can just plus one. This is all the numbers that you will get. Okay. Now, same goes to the broadcast address. Now, we can't do the last usable if we don't have the broadcast address answer. So according to the theory again, for the broadcast address, how do you get the broadcast address? Is your next subnet, next subnet address, you minus one, you will get your own broadcast address. So in this case here, my next subnet will be 110.64.0.0 minus 1. I will get 110.63.255.255. That will be my broadcast address. So I repeat the same steps again. So these will be the answers that I will be getting. Okay. And from the last usable address, how you get the last usable is from your broadcast address minus 1. So you will get 110.63.255.254, okay, and you will get the subsequent answers. Okay, so these are the answers that you get. All right, we have done the VLSM. So in just four minutes only, I believe that you will excel the VLSM, okay? So please subscribe to my channel via VM Tips if you like these videos. Thank you.